Welcome to worship on the first Sunday of Christmas. In today's Gospel lesson we encounter Simeon, who had waited for the consolation of Israel, the Messiah for ages. He was sure that God would fulfill his promise in his lifetime. When Jesus' parents brought him to the temple, he praised him as a light of revelation for the Gentiles. With Simeon, let us rejoice that we as well can praise and worship Christ the Lord. We have gathered for worship on the first Sunday of Christmas. In the name of God the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Willkommen zum Gottesdienst am ersten Sonntag nach Weihnachten. Heute hören wir im Evangelium von Simeon, der im Tempel auf den Trost Israels wartete, in der Gewissheit, dass Gott seine Verheißung erfüllen würde. Als er das Jesuskind von den Eltern gebracht sieht, pries er ihn als das Licht der Heiden und die Freude Israels. Lasst uns mit unserem Gottesdienst dem Beispiel Semeons folgen und Christus als unseren Herrn loben und preisen. Wir halten Gottesdienst am ersten Sonntag nach Weihnachten. Im Namen Gottes, des Vaters und des Sohnes und des Heiligen Geistes. Amen. From Psalm 111. Alleluia! I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and splendor, and his righteousness endures forever. He makes his marvelous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gives food to those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is a beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Let us pray. Stand fast, God. Grant patience and faithfulness to your servants as we bear witness to the incarnation of your Son. Teach us to close ourselves with love so that our lives will bear witness to your divine love for all creation through your Son, Jesus Christ, 
Amen. Wir beten. Jesus Christus, du Mensch gewordener Gottessohn, das Wunder deiner Geburt ist kaum zu begreifen. Lass uns wachsen im Verstehen, dass wir mit Herzen und Sinnen dich erfahren, der du eins bist mit dem Vater und dem Heiligen Geist, Gott von Ewigkeit zu Ewigkeit. Amen. Reading from Colossians chapter 3. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness and patience, bearing with one another and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all, these put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Joseph and Mary brought Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. There they met a man whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed and the thought will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. The Gospel of the Lord. Das Evangelium nach Lukas im zweiten Kapitel Als Josef und Maria nach Jerusalem gingen, um Jesus im Tempel darzustellen, begegneten sie einem Mann mit Namen Simeon. Und dieser Mann war fromm und gottesfürchtig und wartete auf den Trost Israels, und der Heilige Geist war mit ihm. Und ihm war ein Wort zuteil geworden von dem Heiligen Geist. Er solle den Tod nicht sehen, er habe denn zuvor den Christus des Herrn gesehen. Und er kam auf Anregen des Geistes in den Tempel. Und als die Eltern das Kind Jesus in den Tempel brachten, um mit ihm zu tun, wie es Brauch ist nach dem Gesetz, da nahm er ihn auf seine Arme und lobte Gott und sprach, Herr, nun lässt du deinen Diener in Frieden fahren, wie du gesagt hast. Denn meine Augen haben deinen Heiland gesehen, den du bereitet hast vor allen Völkern. Ein Licht für Erleuchten die Heiden und zum Preis deines Volkes Israel. Und sein Vater und seine Mutter wunderten sich über das, was von ihm gesagt wurde. Und Simeon segnete sie und sprach zu Maria, seiner Mutter, Siehe, dieser ist gesetzt zum Fall und zum Aufstehen für viele in Israel. Und zu einem Zeichen, dem widersprochen wird, und auch durch deine Seele wird ein Schwert dringen, damit viele Herzen Gedanken offenbar werden. Das Evangelium des Herrn. Oh! 
grace and peace to you from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gnade und Friede sei mit euch von Gott, dem Vater und von Jesus Christus, unserem Herrn. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this Christmas season, liebe Weihnachtsgemeinde, mit großer Vorfreude haben wir dem Weihnachtsfest entgegengesehen. Wir haben uns darauf gefreut, an Weihnachten Gottesdienst zu halten, die vertrauten und wohlklingenden Lieder zu singen, mit Familie zusammenzukommen und ein Festessen zu genießen. Einige dieser Dinge können wir nach wie vor tun, auch wenn wir den Gottesdienst wieder einmal in Online-Form anbieten müssen, aufgrund der geänderten, pandemiebedingten Situation hier in Manitoba. With great anticipation, we looked forward to Christmas. We were excited to offer worship in our church, to sing the well-known and beloved Christmas carols, to get together with family and enjoy a festive meal. Some of these things we still can do and enjoy. However, due to the critical changes with regards to the pandemic in our province here in Manitoba, we had to cancel our worship services instead of in-person worship gatherings. We are back to offering you the worship service online. We prepared so carefully for the celebration of Jesus' birth. I changed, I rewrote my message that I had originally prepared for today, the first Sunday of Christmas, which you should have received by mail or by email. It seems what was meant to be a joyful experience and a perfect Christmas celebration has been thwarted. Our striving for perfection can backfire as the following true story shows. After a church underwent some significant remodeling, the congregation gathered for the first time in the new sanctuary to celebrate Christmas. The church was beautifully decorated, the wall behind the altar had been designed to hold many poinsettias, and they all looked wonderful. The liturgy was engaging, the music sounded marvelous, Everybody in the pews, the whole congregation, was pleased. It was a perfect Christmas. At least, so it seemed. All of a sudden, the platform for the, for the poinsettias gave in. With a loud crash, the poinsettias fell to the floor. The clay pots broke loudly. Dirt and tangled plants spewed everywhere. It was a mess. Dieses Unglück hat natürlich der perfekten Weihnachtsstimmung einen Dämpfer versetzt. So sollte man meinen. Doch irgendwie steht diese Unordnung, die da entstanden ist, auch sinnbildlich für den Grund, warum wir Weihnachten feiern. I am sure that we can identify with a story in our time. The mess that we are going through. We know what it feels like to have our sense of perfection be shattered. Or maybe it is an illusion of perfection that we are going after. Lament is of no help here. Rather, we have the opportunity to refocus. As we consider this story, it seems that the perfect Christmas mood has been shattered, probably a mood that resonates with us. But let us look at what's going on from a different angle. Then we might see that despite all the broken pots and the mess, or maybe because of all that, Christmas was actually perfected in that moment. The pots made it clear that we live in a broken and sinful world. The big mess actually serves as an ample illustration for the purpose of Christmas, the reason why God has decided that he needed to come in Jesus into our mess to do some cleaning up, to fix what has been shattered, and to restore our broken relationship with them. While our Christmas, or our lives, can't be perfect, God makes it perfect for us, through his son, Jesus. Our Christmas mood does not depend on what we can do for God or for Jesus through our Christmas worship and celebrations, but that we recall what God has done for us, that he has given us Jesus for our salvation. The one who is perfect and sinless, 
has come into the world to redeem and to reconcile us imperfect sinners with his Father, our God. Mit der Geburt Jesu kam in unsere verwundete, von Sünde geplagte Welt Gott, um die Dinge, die in Unordnung geraten sind, wiederherzustellen und gerade zu biegen. Jesus, der perfekte und sündlose Sohn Gottes, kam, um uns unvollkommene, sündige Menschen mit Gott zu versöhnen. Lasst uns auf Simeon blicken, von dem wir im Evangeliumstext gehört haben. Von ihm können wir lernen, dass wir uns auf wesentliche Dinge konzentrieren sollen. In einem Gedicht von Georg Schwickert drückt der Autor aus, dass er wie Simeon sein möchte. Er sieht auf Simeons demütige Haltung, mit der er das Kommen des Heilands Jesus in die Welt erwartete und stellt sie unseren Erwartungen und Feierlichkeiten entgegen. In dem Gedicht heißt es, weder Geschenke noch Baum, kein Festmahl noch keine Mette. Er sieht nur das Kind und hat genug. Ach, wäre ich wie Simeon. Let us look at Simeon and learn from him, his humble demeanor and his focus on what really matters when we talk about salvation. Not just the consolation of Israel, but ours as well. In a German poem by Georg Schwickert, the author expresses that he wants to be like Simeon. He compares Simeon's modest expectation and sincere anticipation of the Savior's coming into the world with our modern Christmas celebrations. We put a lot of attention on objects, emotions and rituals that might actually obscure our view of what, of who, is essential for our Christmas celebrations. In translation, the poem goes, he sees neither gifts nor tree, nor festive meals nor matins. He only sees the child, that's enough for him. Oh. If I only could be like Simeon. Auch wenn wir uns ein perfektes Weihnachtsfest erhoffen, kann keine Weihnachtsfeier perfekt sein, solange wir die Augen davor verschließen, dass wir Jesu Rettungshandeln für uns brauchen und annehmen müssen. Simeon hilft uns, unsere Augen dafür zu öffnen. Even though we so desperately want a perfect Christmas, No Christmas can be perfect until we see with our eyes Jesus as Savior. When Simeon saw Jesus, he knew that he was the longed for and promised Savior of the world. When we saw him, when he saw him, he knew that he could not now depart, that he could now die in peace. May Simeon help us to open our eyes for Jesus as the one whom God has sent as a small, tender and fragile child to heal our brokenness. Wenn wir erkennen, dass Jesus in diese gebrochene Welt als ein kleines und zerbrechliches Kind hineingekommen ist, um unsere Unordnung und unsere Unruhe wiederherzustellen, dann dürfen wir uns wegen Jesus doch eines perfekten Weihnachtsfestes erfreuen. Nicht, weil wir es selbst so eingerichtet hätten, sondern weil er es für uns perfekt gemacht hat. Are you having a perfect Christmas? Probably not because there is still brokenness in our lives that longs for healing. And yet, you are having a Christmas that is perfected because Jesus has come into our broken world to make things right for us. It is not because of our own merit, but because of Jesus, we can enjoy indeed a truly perfect Christmas. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Der Friede Gottes, welcher höher ist als alle menschliche Vernunft, bewahre eure Herzen und Sinne in Christus Jesus, unserem Herrn. Amen. On Christmas night, all Christians sing to hear the news the angel bring. On Christmas night, all Christians sing to hear the news the angels bring. News of great joy, news of great mirth. News
Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lead your church, Lord, to follow the example of Simeon. Let all baptized people embrace Christ's child by word and faith, and so be ready to depart whenever they are called. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lover of mankind, bind our families together in perfect harmony and rule our hearts with the peace of Christ. Cause his word to dwell richly in our homes. Let our songs, words, and deeds be done in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed Lord, help the sick and suffering, especially those who desire our prayers. Surround them with your loving Christ, and according to your gracious will, heal them. Comfort all those who mourn, and fill their hearts with a certain hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for our brothers and sisters who have departed in the peace of faith. Bring us with them to see with our own eyes the light of the nations and the glory of Israel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Vater unser im Himmel, geheiligt werde dein Name, dein Reich komme, dein Wille geschehe wie im Himmel so auf Erden. Unser tägliches Brot gib uns heute und vergib uns unsere Schuld, wie auch wir vergeben unseren Schuldigern. Und führe uns nicht in Versuchung, sondern erlöse uns von dem Bösen. Denn dein ist das Reich und die Kraft und die Herrlichkeit in Ewigkeit. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Empfangt den Segen. Er segne euch und behüte euch. Der Herr lasse sein Angesicht leuchten über euch und sei euch gnädig. Der Herr erhebe sein Angesicht auf euch und gebe euch seinen Frieden. Amen.